and Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage, ask for Jack. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. That I felt meant something to me. Promos that I knew were going to hit with people that people didn't believe in. Could um, you go to Vince when you wanted to express? I didn't oh, do that. Oh, fuck it's, yeah, bro. Did I ever? To my detriment, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure Triple H was standing outside that door wanting to rip my fucking head off. <laughs> He's in there again. So, He's in so, there again, yeah. You're so, you're, you're, you're so great with the promo, which is, yeah. you know, again, to me, oh, yeah. as a well, wrestler Well, I guess fan. that's also another thing. Right now, I'm a decade in. I'm 10, 11 years in. But when I first got out there, bro, I had this mentality that I was the best. And nobody could tell me. What the fuck could say? And you, that still remains today. You, you are one of the all-time greats. But let me ask you this, Great and I don't know how true Great. this is. Is it true that you were fined for farting in promo class? That is very true. <laughs> what, what? What is you that about? the airport diner beforehand? No, so we were just talking about promo <laughs> class, okay? Now, imagine monotony, okay? Um, anything, you know, for every girl out there that you fantasize about, there's a guy sick of fucking her. <laughs> Okay. Ah, wow. That's so great. You're so right. <laughs> so love, this great. is the truth. <laughs> so when you're in promo class with Dusty Rhodes every single week for five or six years, and you see guys go up there and cut terrible promos, and Dusty tries to get them, you know, and it ends up taking that promo that should have been done in 90 seconds is going to take 20 minutes for this class to get through because Dusty's now helping this guy and he wants them to repeat it and no say it like this or maybe go in this direction or do something different. And so, you know, I, what I would give today to be a fly on the wall in one of those promo classes to listen to Dusty right now. Mm. But when you're in it, you, you can't see the forest from the trees. Mm. So some days you just want to get the fuck out of promo class. And if, I, if I'm if i in promo class and there's 60 of us and we got to sit through all 60 promos and Dusty's got to talk to everybody at the end of every one, I'm just trying to make this class go as fast as possible. So when Dusty Rhodes goes, anybody got anything for him? Anybody got any questions? <laughs> My hand is the fuck down. Just don't say shit. Anyone, Dusty just asked what you thought of that promo, and then all of a sudden you see fucking, fucking some dickhead raise his hand. Now we're talking for another 10 minutes about that terrible cool promo I just saw, and there was no fix in it, dog. I was like, bro, and imagine you're me, and I'm the best fucking promo in this class every fucking week, dog. Every week. And everybody would tell you, I waited to go last, so I could do my promo on yours. The one I just saw. I'll, pro I'll cut a promo on what I just saw that'll be better than what you just said, dog. So, one day I got cocky. And I raised my hand because somebody was struggling through a promo, having a hard time, and Dusty was working with them, and I usually never say shit. And I was Dusty's guy. So when I raised my hand, Dusty stopped like, oh shit. Enzo's going to chime in. He never chimes in. He just shits there and wants to get the fuck out of here, but he don't know that. So I'm like, yeah, I'm chiming in. I want to help this promo, right? So I raised my hand, and when Dusty called my name, he's like, Enzo, I let out the loudest fart you ever heard in your life off the steel chair. It just oh, vibrated the, through promo class, bro. Chair. And I was like, but before I did it, I went, Corbin. It was Baron Corbin cutting a promo. I was like, Corbin. And he went, yeah, Enzo. And I went, dead pandem, straight face. <laughs> Can't teach Dusty that. Rhodes stood up. He was like, Enzo. I was like, yeah. He walked over to me, grabbed me my, my hand. He walked me to the door. He goes, get the fuck out. I was like, wait, what? 
I, I was like, Dusty, I thought you would love that. Like, I thought I thought that was my promo. I was like, I didn't go yet. I was going to use that as my promo. Right, right. I was like, I just got the biggest reaction in the room. Right. From a fucking fart. The sound. Like, everyone in this room is either offended, right. fucking happy, yeah. sad. Yeah. They can't believe it. They're in gall. Like, I got every range of human emotion about that fart right there, boy. You didn't see the brilliance in that, Dusty? Like, you're my guy. I thought you... Bro, Dusty was pissed, man. So, wow. I showed up to work the next day. What I did not know is literally Dusty Rhodes called Triple H that night and got me fired. Oh, oh sh- oh, really? The what? next morning when I showed up to work, Dusty wow. Rhodes called Triple H back up and said, no, nah, I'm not going to fire him. Oh, man. And then Dusty didn't talk to me for like two weeks. And I was like, oh, shit, man. I thought, bro, wow, how did I fuck this up? I'm going to get fired. I think I got jobbed out on TV and, like, lost and wasn't on, like, a pay-per-view or something. And I didn't even realize that's why. Like, I don't even put two and two. Right, right. I'm like, I look at the card. I'm like, oh, we're not booked today, Cass. And Cass knows, like, you motherfucker. You <laughs> fucking fu- fucking fight. You know what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't even register, right, bro. Right, right, right. Uh, and then um, one day I was getting my ass kicked in the ring. And they were just giving me hell, bro. They Like, they like imagine, like. You're, 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 you have practice every day. So I'm booked every weekend. I'm Enzo. They got to book you, but they don't, I don't know that. I don't know that I'm Enzo and I need, and they have to put me on the card. I just think I can be taken off at any time or fired. But me and Cass, like, didn't realize our worth. Like, I didn't get it. I was just in NXT. I didn't realize we're selling out the Barclays Center. We're selling out this arena. They can't fire you right now, bro. Right. You guys are, like, the hottest act in the company. Right. And in, me, in my mind, I'm like, oh, bro, I'm getting fired today. You know, every day. So, uh, when I got, when I farted, I think I had that fart heat until the day I, I left NXT and went to the main roster. And it even carried over. I still had that fart heat. Wow. Funny how life works. So... Dusty, one day I'm getting my ass kicked in the ring. He can see it on the monitor that they're fucking with me probably. Like, you know, I'm in the ring and, and it's like everybody take a turn putting heat on Zoe. And it just, there's like 10 different guys beating me up. And I'm I'm selling, I'm just doing, like, I I think, but I'm like hungover, bro. And I'm like fucking hurting. And I went out that night and it was like 2 a.m. Now you see, you've been on the card Thursday, Friday. Everyone who's on the card is off. Not Enzo. Because you farted, now you're in beginner class again. So I got class at 7 a.m. every fucking day, no matter if I got home at 2 a.m. the night before, and I got to set up the ring with the guys and shit. So I'm getting punished for that. And one day, Dusty just calls me into his office, and, like, I just went in there, and he didn't say a fucking word, and he just went about his day. And he just got me out of the ring because he saw me get my ass kicked. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And he just, like, they don't need to treat him like that. This is my heat with him. Right. (laughs) Sit the fuck down. Right. So, uh, then Dustin came in the office that day and, and I was just, I was just sitting there, bro, quiet. Like what, why am I here? Like, am I going to, and then Dusty would call me in periodically for the next like couple months and just get me out of that shit class that I was in and just go about his day. And what I didn't realize was like, he's taking phone calls with you in the room, Enzo. Like you're learning. Um, and, uh. With a twinkle in his eye and just a wink of his eye, I knew I was all right. We didn't have to talk. He, I didn't apologize. and just, <laughs> just uh, you know, it was a wink. Good stuff. Um, but I came to find out on the day that Dusty Rhodes passed away, four years, three years later, 2020, I believe, on the very day that he passed away, I didn't realize it was the day he passed away. Uh, I, I, I wake up that morning and I open up my Instagram and just the first thing on my feed is a story about fucking the nasty boys were overseas, farted on an airplane so bad, blew it out. Miss Elizabeth landed, caught a flight and flew home. She was so offended by the nasty boys. They missed that tour because Vince McMahon, the biggest draw in the company, was Miss Elizabeth and Macho Man. He was so mad at the Nasty Boys, he took them off that tour and flew Miss Elizabeth back to Europe to finish that tour out. What I didn't realize is that, dude, Dusty knew that. We don't fuck with farts here in the WWE, bro. Vince McMahon will fire you for that fart. I don't need to tell you that. But he shit can't. And I found that out on the day he died, like four years later. Wow. 
And like, just the first thing I did, I woke up that day, boom, see this fart story. And I'm like, yo, what? Yo, that's crazy. The SD boys got major fart heat, got <laughs> shit canned by the WWE, got fired for it. Oh, wow. Today's the day Dusty died? Oh, my God. Dusty just told me why I had heat. I was like, he's he, so like, I, I'm a spiritual guy, God fearing, and I believe that, you know, um, I hope Dusty sees my my struggle my up my down and then and, and, uh you know every wrestler goes through it bro I'm, I'm fucking no different dude like you leave the wwe what do you do from there it's mm. not all roses and there's also that it's the wwe do i want to go back tomorrow it's like bro like man i know what it takes to be there and, and, and it takes a lot so um you know, that's a conversation I'd probably have to have with my family, bro. Like, like that. I mean, my mom, my dad, and my goddaughter. Like, if I ever did it for anybody, it would be my goddaughter. I'd take myself out of it, bro. I did it already. Like, I don't need to do that shit again. I did WrestleMania. I broke my ass. I got beat up. And, and it was all for that. And uh, I won titles. And I had a fight in Madison Square Garden. And, bro, bucket list check. Check. And that, that was it. Like, I didn't fucking... I never wanted to be in the main event of Mania and, like, AJ Styles get a five-star match or some shit. Like, mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about that shit. Like, I just... I wanted to have a good time and do the garden and have my mom and dad there. And, like, I did that shit. So, now well, there's, like, other people that want to well, do that shit. Maybe, maybe, maybe do it. God knows they need you. Man, God's got a plan for me, bro, one way or another. But like, this, but this time, but this time it's a different, right? It's a more evolved end, Enzo, and maybe do it for the enjoyment of it. Yeah, belt this time, time don't fought. Also, yeah, but I also yeah. don't know that how much I can enjoy being told what to do. Yeah. I mean, like I said to you, from day one, I was in this bitch going like, "Yeah, I'm the man. I can do this. Mm -hmm. Give me the microphone, I'll figure it out. I'll get right. these people going." And it's just a matter of getting over, and that's all you have to do in wrestling. Fuck all the other shit. Can you mm -hmm. get over? Can you get shit over? Can you get your opponent over? Can you get the match over? Can you get the lockup over? You know, like, what can you get over? And uh, can you draw their interest? And, like, bro, if you're going to write me a promo, I hope you know it's just bullet points of the story that you want me to tell. Mm -hmm. Don't ever fucking hand me a promo and tell me that's what I'm saying. Like, at this point in my career, I'm like, bro, if you can do this better than me, then you do it. Here's the mic. There you go. 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 You're the writer? You wrote this for me? You want me to say it? You want to tell me how to say it? Everybody knows. Everybody knows. It's me, bro. It's what I do. So just, if you respect me, I can respect you back, bro. Respect is a two-way street. If you respect my art, my work, and what it is that I bring to the table, what I do, I'll respect you. And we can work together, and, I'll, and I can make whatever promo you had my own. And we, I can always, I can always regurgitate a promo that you want me to say. Like if the goal is, hey, he wants to have a match with you, and he wants to fuck your girl, and you know you guys got heat for the girl, and now, okay, I go tell that story. You just told it to me on the bullet points. But when they're handing you a promo and it says, how are you? And I'm like, I want to say, how you doing? And they're like, no, you got to say, how are you? And I'm like, I want to say, how you doing? I'm like, no, you have to say, how are you? I'm like, bro, I'm lost here. I'm fucking gone. Right. I don't have that patience for that shit right, right. now. Right.